they were old ladder frame trucks pulling sleds and running through the mud pit and then they would drive over cars and then they graduated to doing full-blown shows where they jump things. Then the tube frame chassis came, which was a huge innovation for monster trucks in general and a gas over hydraulic shock. So those things were, were very large innovations and they spread across the whole industry fairly fast. Now we find ourselves in an area where for us it's a game of inches. The differences between number 18 and number 21 are literally inches. Two inches was the calculation that I kind of used to build that truck. It's more about the center of gravity. The COG is two inches lower. That's all because we were able to take a transfer case from an 18 inch transfer case down to a 16, which allowed me to bring the motor down two inches, which is attached to the transmission. So all that weight gets slung lower in the chassis and that cultivates itself to being able to change some other things a couple inches as well as far as how high the shocks are mounted in relationship to the COG so when you can get your center of gravity down and your shock mounting higher it's a more stable platform. The up travel on the axles is two inches farther up inside of the chassis. It's two inches longer in wheelbase so 18 was a 148 inch wheelbase and 21 is a 150 inch wheelbase. It just lent itself to a truck that would flat track a lot better. It was a, a more stable platform by the time we were done. It's about drivability. It's mainly a difference to the driver. It's how you feel the truck. The truck is faster because it will corner better. Uh, it will jump higher because it's balanced right. But in the end, it comes full circle to where the fans get a better show. With 21, we learned a few things with the shock. We run what's called a gas over hydraulic shock. What that means is everything that's in red in this shock is fluid. Then everything in blue is gas, and we run nitrogen. So this is all oil across, over, and down, and then this is nitrogen, gas over hydraulic. So you put a predetermined amount of nitrogen pressure in here, and that's based on how much nitrogen it takes in all eight of your shocks to hold the truck at a certain ride height. And as the shaft goes in and it displaces oil, it moves this piston down and it forces it against the gas. From whatever hit you take, this regulates itself and pushes back, which shoves the shaft out. This is the nitrogen piston right here. This is what everybody ran for the longest time. When you're trying to seal a gas from a fluid, a fluid seal isn't really what you want. What would happen is gas would slip past the fluid seal and get trapped in the middle, or it would slip past both, and it would aerate all the oil. Then the shock doesn't work right anymore. So on 18, and even actually just a tick before 18, we got rid of this design, and we just took the same piston, machined a groove in it, and we ran a two-lip seal that was made for sealing gas from oil. That was a huge advantage for us. Then when we built 21, we learned from 18 that the higher we jumped, the faster the speed was that this piston was was rocking itself in the bore and it would scratch all the inside and then it would make it easier for gas to bypass through those little scratches. We came up with this design which now has a wear band on the bottom and then same seal and it just has a rubber backer that goes in. That's to keep the seal out against the wall of the shock. But now when we do this, it's much more stable in the bore because this wear band is composite and it doesn't scratch near as bad as what the aluminum piston did before. There's a lot of time that is spent in rebuilding shocks. It's probably the most complicated part on the truck and it is the one that the driver feels the most. This particular shock that's on this truck is the gas over hydraulic, but this one is referred to as a reverse accumulator. Instead of having the crossover in the top of the shock, the crossover is now down here in the body of the shock which means that your nitrogen piston is still in this chamber, but your gas is up here now and your fluid goes from here all the way down and up into the body. With the reverse accumulator, it actually meters the oil through the valving piston before it pushes on a nitrogen piston. It's a, a much more uh, solid application uh, and actually more forgiving as far as bypassing nitrogen into your oil or bypassing oil into your nitrogen.